Hi, I'm Stan and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm not sure how you found me, but I'm glad that you did. I hope you liked this video. Tonight, we're going to be joined by our model, Holly, and we're going to attempt a holiday-themed portrait. I'm going to discuss how to light your subject properly and how to blend the background with the Christmas tree lights to make a nice, soft, pleasing background holiday style. So here's a scenario for you. Somebody asked you if you wouldn't mind taking a portrait for them around the holidays and you quickly agreed to because after all you're more than qualified. You've got a camera somewhere in the back of your closet. You have a strobe and don't forget those photos that you took for your cousin for their Instagram page. So as the days approach, you start getting a little bit nervous. Maybe you've stepped a little bit uh, out of your comfort zone. The night of the shoot, you arrive uh, inside, you're a total wreck as uh, demonstrated by the sweat on your forehead, but you're trying to stay cool. So what do you do? You take your flash, you mount it to the top of your camera, you set everything on auto mode, and uh, you put your subject in front of the tree and you fire off a shot. So shortly after you've taken this photo, everyone that was sitting over in the kitchen area watching the professional at work, come over to see the image on the back of your camera and suddenly you're getting high fives as if you just hit a grand slam in the bottom of the ninth inning. That confidence that you were beginning to lose is coming back a little bit as if this was some sort of validation that you in fact are a great photographer. But I have to be perfectly honest with you. If you think that this is a good photo that you just shot, I don't think that we could be friends. Don't get me wrong, there is a place for a shot like this, maybe grandma's scrapbook or something, I don't know. But as a photographer, you could do a lot better. And if you're okay with these results, then perhaps you're not gonna grow like maybe you could. So what I'm going to do now is put an image up on the screen. This is through the magic of video editing. It's an image that we're gonna shoot tonight that we actually haven't shot yet, but I'm going to put this up as an example of what you can do with lighting compared to what we did just now in front of the tree. I'm also doing this for another reason. If you're anything like me and you've sat through 10 minutes of a YouTube video only to get to the end and be really disappointed with the results and feel like that you've wasted your time, well now you get to see the image up front and you can decide whether or not you want to hang around for the rest of the video, which I really hope that you will. And if I may, it's perfect time for a shameless plug. If you would kindly, if you do like what you see, subscribe to my video, uh, my YouTube channel rather, I would really appreciate it. I'm trying to grow my channel and this would give me the motivation to continue to do more videos like this. So now let's talk about what you can do to improve that photo that you took in front of the tree. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is to get your flash off of the top of your camera. There are several different ways that you can do that. Most of the newer cameras have built-in wireless technology that will allow you to shoot remotely. You put your flash somewhere else and control it from the camera. Or you can buy a trigger, which is what I have here. This is a Canon STE3. It's a trigger that sits in the hot shoe and I can control my speed lights, which happen to be, by the way, 600 EXRTs by Canon. I can control multiple units, I can put them in groups, I can control everything right from the control panel here so that I don't have to walk over to the flash units individually. So I understand that maybe you don't have the budget or the equipment to do either one of those things. At the very least, I'm going to suggest that you position yourself perhaps next to a wall where you could turn your flash head and bounce the light off of that. You're creating a bigger light source which is going to make uh, a more pleasing light and less harsh shadows. The other thing that I'm going to tell you to do is to pull your subject off of the background. Having your subject right up against the Christmas tree is not going to work. What it does is it, it uh, creates competing elements in your image, taking the attention away from your intended subject, which is your model. It makes me laugh sometimes when I see someone maybe out in the park with a camera walking with their friend and they come across a beautiful tree and the friend says, you know, take a picture of me in front of this tree. They do, they look at the back of the camera, it's beautiful and they post it somewhere. But 
I have to wonder, is that a picture of a beautiful tree with a person standing in front of it? Or is it a picture of a person with a tree behind them? There is a difference you do not want to create that distraction. So get your subject as far away from the tree as you can. Another thing worth pointing out is that you want to get the Christmas lights. You want to, you want to make sure they're blurred, number one, not to create that distraction. And you want them to appear much larger than they would when, if your subject was standing right up against the tree. So there's two different ways to, to get that done. Number one, you have to position yourself far away from the Christmas lights, as far as you can. This is not the ideal setup here for taking photos. I'm actually in my living room. I'm going to be shooting in my foyer. So I understand that you'll probably be working with tight spaces, but that's okay. You want to get as far away as you can from the Christmas lights and you want to put your subject as close as you can to your camera. So again, two things, get your subject close to your camera, focus on them and be far away from the Christmas lights. And you'll see that those lights in the background, I'll post some examples, will appear much larger than they would if you were standing up close. So also want to talk about the modifier that I'm going to be using to light my subject. This umbrella behind me is a reflective umbrella. I'm going to shoot my flash up into the bottom of the umbrella. The top is covered with a black fabric and that will control my light so it's not bouncing all over the room, giving me much greater control. So now what? So you've done that. You've stepped away from the background. You've somehow got your flash off of your camera. Now comes exposure. Where do you start? Two things. There's two different exposures, basically, is what you're using here. Number one, the flash itself is going to illuminate your subject, and then your ambient light is going to control your background. So for starters, turn your flash off. Don't worry about that for now. Put your camera in manual, full manual mode. Start off at about 60th. I'm going to stop all the way down to 2.8. I suggest that you do the same thing. Now you could shoot this with a prime and uh, maybe get away with 1.8, 1.2. There's some really fast primes out there, but that depth of field is razor sharp and it's very possible that you could get maybe one side of your model's face in focus and the other won't be. So for my purposes, uh, 2.8 works pretty well for what we're doing here tonight. So 60th, 2.8, and then you're going to adjust your ISO up or down until you get the intensity of the background lights that you're looking for. You don't want it to be too dark. You want to introduce a little bit of ambient light here so you can kind of make out that it's a tree and there might be some other colors that you're introducing into the, into the photo. And that's it. You're going to leave those settings throughout the whole shoot. Now I should caution you though, you're going to be changing your position throughout the shoot and the background could change on you, but you could easily adjust it up or down with the ISO. If it's too dark, crank up the ISO a little bit. If it's too light, you can, you can increase your shutter speed if you're stopped all the way down. You can increase your, shut, your shutter speed um, anywhere up until your max uh, flash sync. And we'll talk about that some other time. I don't want to get that into uh, this video here. Now, you've got the background light established. Now you need to light your subject. I am going to have my flash set at ETTL. That is uh, Canon's version of electronic through the lens control. Your flash unit is going to do all the heavy lifting for you. It's going to correctly or close to it expose your subject. And what you can do throughout the shoot is when you look at your images on the back of the camera, if you're not real happy with it, you can tweak it using flash exposure compensation you can increase or decrease 
that uh, flash output, but it's a good idea to let the camera do the initial settings. By the way, how ETTL works, and if you're shooting Nikon, it's TTL, same thing. It sends out a pre-flash. It happens so quickly that you don't even see it, but every time you take a photo, it's flashing twice. That first flash that happens is the messenger. It sends the light to your subject, it reports back to the camera, and it changes the settings accordingly. It'll give you just the right amount of light that you're going to need to uh, illuminate your subject. So there you have it. It's as simple as that. Um, you just keep your eye on it throughout the shoot, make some adjustments if you have to, but uh, I think that that's going to give you some really good tips to, to get you close to where you want to be. So we're going to start shooting. Holly's about to arrive and we're going to cue the real cheesy music and sit back and enjoy it. So there are a couple of other tips I'd like to share with you to make the photo session even better. Number one, let's talk about the color of light. The flash output is typically rated for daylight. It's rated in a Kelvin scale, K-E-L-V-I-N. And the flash is about 5,500 Kelvin, which is a bluish tint. Our Christmas tree lights, however, are very warm, a lot of orange. So you'll notice in some of the photos that when we're shooting with a bare flash and we're illuminating our subject with it, that it's a little bit of a bluish cast on our subject, but very warm light in the background. So what you could do to balance that is put a gel on the front of your flash. This particular system here is by Magmod. Mag is uh, short for magnet. It's a company that has really cool products. Uh, most of them fall into the why didn't I think of that category. But anyway, this unit right here is called a mag grip. You stretch that over, put it on your flash head, and then you simply take a, a gel, a gel holder, that has a gel inside of it that you can remove and change colors as you, as you need to. This particular gel here is called a quarter CTO. CTO means color temperature orange. So by simply putting that in front of your flash, you're now warming up the light that's coming out of your flash, which will also uh, balance the light with that of the background. The other cool little tip I want to share with you is that uh, you can actually sh change the shape of the lights that are on the tree by putting a simple piece of paper, a cutout, in front of your lens. I took some construction paper here and I cut a circle with a heart in it and uh, I cut it to the inside diameter of my filter on the front of my camera and it'll just pressure fit right in there and it'll hold it in place. When you're shooting wide open and you get that real blurry big Christmas light in the background, it'll actually change the shape of it to whatever you've cut out here. You can do whatever shape. Here's a, here's a Christmas tree. You could do snowmen. You could do stars. Whatever. Sky's the limit. But it's really cool. I wouldn't overdo it, but every once in a while it, it'll help to break up the photo and make something really interesting.
So that's a wrap. I really hope that you enjoyed the video and that maybe you learned something. And by the way, you may have noticed in some of the photos that there was a hair light. I simply took another flash unit, put it on a shelf, and fired it at the back of our model for a little bit of separation, controlled it with the trigger above. So remember, if you have any suggestions, just leave it in the comment section below. I'll see if I could do something with that. And if you've already subscribed, I thank you very much. And I would also like to thank our model, Holly, who is not only beautiful, but a real pleasure to work with. So God bless, and I hope we see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> There's a couple of other tips I'd like to share with you that might make the... Here comes my wife. <laughs>